We've had a raft of UK data out this morning, everything from manufacturing through to construction. Here to talk us through all of that is Sean Richards, founder of Not A Yes Man Economics. What's the headline for you today? Well, the, the good news that's been coming through for a while now is UK manufacturing. It's on quite an improving trend. If we look ahead, then the business surveys say that's continued to now. What we got this morning was the official data, which takes us up to the end of November. And it's now, in the last couple of months, catching up with what we were told before. So the news is good, and this is filtering through into quite a few other good areas. It's taking UK production overall with it, because it's a big part of it. And the other point that's good news is that productivity is coming with it. There's well, this an is, irony This here. is key, isn't it? I mean, we've been talking, we've been stuck in a sort of productivity vacuum almost for so long, which has been, you know, people talk about productivity not being great in the UK. So... Is this a signal This change? is good news. And as it comes with it, this is a happenstance, but does come with it. There's a couple of signs of wages picking up this morning. For example, Sainsbury's have given a 4% pay rise. If we stay with the retail sector, Aldi said they were going to last week. So productivity and wages may be there. There's also good signs as well. Feeding in from the numbers, which in general were good. Also went into the trade figures. Ditto, we we're exporting a lot more than we were. Still badly in deficit, but exporting good. So that all works through. The one area that is the sort of cloud in the silver lining is construction. OK, why is that? What's happening there? There's various issues with that. I think if you look backwards for perspective, construction came out of the sort of recession, so improved from about 2012 really well. I think it's run out of steam a bit. And I, Brexit influenced that to some extent. So I think the EU leave vote meant that some projects didn't go forward, I mean, government here and other ones, and we're still suffering from that. Well, I was going to say, we need more homes in the UK. You think that construction is one of those areas that's got to keep... Well, that, that bit is actually picking up. And I mean, speaking right. personally, it's a very difficult thing, because living not far from Nine Elms, which is an enormous building site, it's hard to believe we're not building very much. Therefore, we can't be building much elsewhere. However, Nonetheless, numbers have been very weak. It is in a recession, if you take the numbers. We've had six months of declines, more than that. House building's finally beginning to pick up. So maybe all the government promises, all of the other moves like help to buy, are finally having an influence there. But the rest remains in a recession. And talk, talking about trade earlier on, you know, in, in amidst all of this Brexit indecision we've got going on, a lot of people have been quite critical of, of where the UK economy is. But Again and again and again, it seems to confound to the, the negative side of the argument in, in favour of the positive. Yeah, I've, I've been a believer in that all along. Just one simple factor, which was a fall in the pound. If you look back over time, mm. the economic impact of that on the UK, then the two things would come would be we'd get a, burst, a boost, excuse me, and we'd get inflation. We've seen the inflation through the latter part of last year just above 3% on the official number, which these days is a lot when you look at wage growth. And then we also saw, though, the point that you're saying, that the economy got a pick-up from that. And, and we're seeing a little bit of strength in, in the pound over the last few days. But the, 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 you know, against the euro, you're now getting 113, which, I mean, I've watched that very closely, and it's been stuck at the sort of around the 12 mark for, for quite a while. So, so where, does, where does it go from here? Do we get then continued strength in the pound as a recovery um, over sterling? Um, and then does that then make our goods more expensive? So then it takes us back down again. Where, where, does, where does the well, momentum go? This, this is a problem because you don't exactly know which bit is influencing where. We do know that the pound dropped a bit, and let's say in US dollar terms, has gained a bit more than half of it back. So as this year progresses, it'll be better for inflation. Um, obviously, some of the competition element goes with that. But here we go. Here's a, here's a slight twist in the thing, which overall is good if you run through it. We've done better against the US dollar. That's good for inflation. Not so good against the euro, which is better for trade. So back in the past, this would have seen as the sort of ideal situation. Obviously, if you're about to go on a skiing holiday or something like that, not so welcome because you won't get a lot of euros for your money. However, in terms of the economy, it's not far off the dream ticket. And talking of dream tickets, I couldn't let you go without just asking you to comment on the FTSE this morning. So it touched a new record high. We're seeing this across the whole range of things. I think I saw someone last night say that the S&P 500 had done 77 points in the last six days, which when you consider it was a peak in the first place, is something. Others may have noticed, um, if you follow Japan as I do, that it's got near to 24,000 on the Nikkei, now a long way from the 40,000 it got 
back in 1990 or so. However, a lot more than the eight and a half, nine thousand it was when Albinomics started. So this is a worldwide thing and the FTSE is sort of joining in with the party.